So Andor is starting to give us that peak that I thought it was going to give us at the early days of the Rebel Alliance, and I figured today we could take a closer look at some of the factions that make up the Rebel Alliance, particularly in its early days, because it wasn't always as unified as it was in the original trilogy. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So many of us are mostly familiar with the way the Rebel Alliance functioned during the Galactic Civil War. At the height of the conflict, it had a sort of organized command structure that was more similar to a established government and a professional military, as opposed to a scattered group of rebel factions. But in the early days, it wasn't anything like that. It was ex exactly what I just mentioned, a scattered group of rebel factions. And so I figured today we could take a little bit of a look at what that might have looked like and what we could expect to see from the Rebel Alliance in Andor. So let's just jump right in with the faction that most of you are probably thinking about, Sagarera's Partisans. Sagarera's Partisans are one of the most extreme elements within the Rebel Alliance, and we see them present even up to right before the Battle of Yavin. Led by Saul Gerrera, the resistance leader from Onderon during the Clone Wars, the Partisans were rather aggressive and violent in their actions against the Galactic Empire, and were very upfront with their motivations. They would spend a lot of time hitting targets, sometimes even civilian targets, with the intention of bringing down the Empire, but their extreme views and extreme actions really didn't help the Rebel cause. You see, the Rebel Alliance knew that the war with the Galactic Empire was ultimately going to be a war of the hearts and minds of the people of the galaxy, and blowing up civilian targets doesn't really help that cause. And while Saw Gerrera's partisans did mainly focus on military targets, their callousness when it comes to attacking civilian targets when the need arises, rose some concerns within the other rebel factions, many of whom decided to distance themselves from the partisans for this very reason. Simply, it made them look bad to be associated with the man and the faction that were willing to attack civilians if it served their purposes. It didn't help that a big portion of the motivation behind Saw's partisans was vengeance. The idea of sticking it back to the Empire after all the Empire is done, which, well, that may be satisfying in the short term, ultimately does tend to turn people against your cause. It's interesting to note that the partisans may have been one of the first rebel groups fighting against the Empire, as we do see Saw leading rebel factions on Kashyyyk around the time of Jedi Fallen Order, which is five years after the end of the Clone Wars and the rise of the Empire. But while well, Saw's extreme views are easy to point at and say that's an example of a rogue rebel faction, there were plenty of other factions within the Rebel Alliance, especially in these early days. As the Alliance itself started to form, which by the way, it is an alliance to restore the Republic, it is an alliance of these separate rebel factions, the Rebel Alliance. But prior to the Rebel Alliance forming what we see during the original trilogy, there was a plethora of different factions with different ideals and motives some of which were very similar to the motives and ideals that would be held by the Rebel Alliance as a whole uh, during the original trilogy, and others were more independent-minded and more extreme. If you want an example of Rebel factions that are close to the ideals and practices of the Rebel Alliance that would eventually come to be, the best example I could point you to is Phoenix Cell, or Phoenix Squadron, which we see during Rebels. During the first few seasons of Rebels, they are essentially functioning as an independent cell, a rather large independent Rebel faction, but one that is still separate from a larger alliance. However, they seem to practice a lot of these similar ideals that would be held by the Rebel Alliance as a whole when they officially, formally create the Alliance itself. Phoenix Cell can be seen flying relief missions as well as striking at Imperial targets, usually using hit-and-run tactics, but staying away from civilian targets and things that may turn public opinion against the Rebels. Which, by the way, is only helped by humanitarian missions like what we see them run on several occasions where they're running food and supplies to impoverished peoples across the galaxy. On top of that, a lot of the function of Phoenix Squadron and Phoenix, the Phoenix Cell would ultimately end up being bringing more factions on board with the Rebel cause and starting to snowball into what would eventually become the Rebel Alliance. Now, while that's only two factions, we don't know a ton about many of the others, which are just mentioned in passing or only seen in brief instances. I'm sure Andor will give us a much better look at the Rebel Alliance at this time, and I hope we get to see more of the Rebel Alliance during this season, because it should be much further along during Season 2. But it's really kind of interesting to see the differences between the Rebel Alliance in these early days when they were really a grassroots movement, and the Rebel Alliance when it's more established and 
its transition into the New Republic, a successor state to the Galactic Empire, all of which occurred during the collapse of the Galactic Empire. And if you'd like to learn more about how Disney handled the Empire's collapse, I'll leave a link up here to my video on that. And I'd like you to let me know down in the comments what you think of the rebel factions that we know about so far. Are Saw's partisans too extreme to be realistic and believable? Is Phoenix Squadron's tactics not dramatic enough to get the job done? Let me know down below. And if you have anything else you'd like to see me cover in Star Wars, you can leave that down in the comments as well. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.